Hello, Gary Champion, Psychic Medium, once again. If you've been watching my channel, you've noticed that I've gotten into healing and all of that. And I'm doing some of that. And what I've discovered is interesting. That because I'm not just healing, it's I'm healing people, I'm reading people. If you've noticed during the healing sessions we have online there, the free healing things we do. Um, my guys are telling me stuff about that person as I'm sending the energy where it needs to go. And in the background there's a little thing running that I can <clears throat> sort of read. What What's killing us? Stress. And um, <clears throat> I know my stress goes up, my blood pressure goes up, everything goes haywire. I chill out, do a meditation. You can you put the machine on it, go go right down. So stress is undermining our immune system's ability to protect ourselves. What are we going to do about? It? There's a lot of things that survivors that I've talked to are doing and they're the ones that are beating it so it's a long list maybe a long video I think it's probably the best one I've ever done and I haven't even done it yet number one releasing anger anger against somebody only hurts you it does not hurt that person <laughs> well, I'm really mad at you they don't care they cared they wouldn't have done it so whatever it is that's bothering you let it go releasing anger but sort of I think above that is taking control of your own health that often we wait till it's too late and then we go to a doctor and what do they know slash and burn you're gonna cut it out and they're gonna radiate it and by then your immune system shot anyway so then it's a a race to the finish uh, uh, will the chemicals kill you or or will the cancer kill you often it's not the cancer that kills people it's the drugs they give you to kill it that kill you I don't, I don't think I'm unique in knowing that but I'm the only person I ever know that's ever said it so <laughs> It's a toss-up. People who have not taken the medicine have lived. People who have taken it have lived. It's it's a you're throwing dice in an alley. <clears throat> Take control of your health. Decide what you think is right for you. And for one thing, listen to your own intuition. All the things that have gone wrong with me, I diagnosed. I didn't hire a doctor to tell me what was wrong. I walked into the doctor's office and said, I've got this. He said, well, how do you know? I said, it's what I do. <laughs> I don't think he listens beyond that. And uh, I'll say, I've got this. And they test, and sure enough, that's exactly what it is. But by then, I've already been treating it. And taking pills isn't the answer. It's often, it's, it's what they throw at you because it's what they know. It's their training. And a good pill doctor can do a lot. A good surgeon can do a lot. I'm just saying that maybe if you were in control of it, you'd have made better choices. Realize that doctors can only do so much. They don't have a cure to cancer. It's slash and burn. Just cut something out and irradiate it that's the cure and these people who are trying to raise money for cancer awareness and cancer this and breast cancer I applaud you but there is no cure for cancer cancer occurs because our immune systems are down because of stress and other things your immune system gets lowered it can no longer protect you against this or anything else and people die of pneumonia because their immune system can't fight it anymore okay 
And it's just the beginning of it. You got to want to live. That's a big thing. Notice some of the survivors. And we've had some. We've been healing. And uh, they've come out of it. And um, it's... And some of them have taken the self-healing class and, and, and they, they're continuing to heal themselves, which it keeps their immune system up all the time. And one thing I've noticed is they have a positive sort of thought pattern. They tend to think that they're going to be all right. And there is that old study where 60% of people will survive if they believe they will. That's all it is. It's a positive belief structure, positive thought. Use your intuition. Doctors can only do so much. Okay, take control of your own health. Usually, you know, you... It's, it's like anything in life. If you want it done right, do it yourself. My wife made the comment the other day that you can now order groceries online and they deliver them. And we've been in the store and watched them package those up. They go around with a cart and they've got an order and they put they chuck stuff in there and then it gets shipped to the home. They just pick up the first one. They're not like you. They're not saying this chicken looks old or this lettuce is not right. They pick the first one on the top and chuck it in there and because they're not going to eat it. You are. So trust your intuition, trust yourself. And I, I bought groceries by just looking at them or feeling them or uh, there's a certain energy that comes off of good fruit, things like that. I know it sounds nutty, but it's the truth. Um, have a good diet. These are a lot of things. I'm sorry. These are the things I came up with. Do you want to live? Do you want to not get sick and then have to worry about this? See, this is, can be preventative. And then once you're, you've got something, it can also help. But it's better if it comes out here instead of after you've got whatever it is. How do you increase positive thoughts? I tell my wife every day that we're lucky people. I'm lucky to be here doing this and I'm lucky to be alive. And uh, that's truly how I feel. So to me, that's positive thought. Maybe I've survived because of it. And my intuition about my health and not relying on doctors, understanding that they're doing the best they can. There's just only so much they can do. Take up yoga, something meditative. Yoga is very meditative. It's relaxing. It's good, good for you. And it's probably no better, it's probably no better than getting in an inner tube and floating down the river fishing for fish. It's probably no better than that. It's, it's an activity in which you're not thinking really that much about anything. Outside hobbies, interest, I have a little shop down in the garage. I've told you all about it. I've, I've made all these things, stained glass and rings and signs and all kinds of things as a hobby. It keeps your mind active. I write books. I do videos. I have a website. I'm, I'm active. It'd be easy for me to just sit down. What happens when you sit down? If you've, if you've known people, usually three or four years and they're gone because they've, they've let go of a reason to live, usually. Energy healing gives a boost to the immune system and that will help, help fight diseases. That's all healing is. That's all energy healing is. It boosts your immune system back to what it once was or close to it. Where you, it, and it will fight all things. So self-healing is a, a very good idea. Or go to a healer if you have one that you like. And there's all kinds of ways of doing it. A long list of them, I think. But there's three or four that are favorites. So pick one, learn it, do it to yourself, 
The one I teach is just one that I made up. It works fine. Actually saying the word healing, my hands are now turning on. They're actually getting warm. So it's become habitual. It's about self-discovery. I know these things about myself. I know as soon as I give up and have no reason to live and don't have outside activities, don't have a positive attitude, things are going to get pretty nasty. So I'm usually up every morning early. I'm at the computer. I'm writing. I'm doing videos. I'm, my brain is active. I have a book I'm writing on. Here's a clue. It doesn't even matter if the book ever sees a lot of day. I probably have nine or ten books lying around that I started and never finished just because I don't know why. In the middle, I realized it wasn't a good book, that it was something I should be writing about. So, um, and I actually, I have a, an energy healing book that's got like a hundred pages on it or something that I'm not writing on, that I should be writing on. But I'm still in the discovery moment. It's up to you to save you. It's up to you to save you. Now, those of you who have genetic things, it's harder. You have a genetic uh, predisposition to something. It's harder, but it can be done. More than likely, it's a predisposition to a poor immune system that you've inherited. And it just can't keep you going. Oh, he died at this and he died at that. Um, and people get fatalistic. Daddy died at 49. I'm going to die at 51 because some doctor told me so. Well, yeah, pills and slash and burning is not the answer. They do save lives, but at what expense? Before you go that way, try something like this. Try self-healing. Try an energy class. Think positive. Take control of your health. Release the anger. Realize that doctors are limited. We're in the dark ages there. They're not back to not washing their hands and germs killing people, but we're not much further beyond that. Slash and burn's been the status for cancers as long as I can remember. You have choices. And how you spend your time... Largely depends on the choices you make intuitively because, I, you know, I have a doctor. He, here, take this. Here, take that. When the solution is letting go of anger, relaxing, de-stressing, take yoga. My wife and I dance the Texas Two-Step. Very relaxing and entertaining because we're not very good. We laugh a lot. Laughter is a big curative. If you can't laugh a lot, you're in trouble. That's a sure sign. So laugh a lot. Have fun. Why have I come to do this video? I have no idea. It just occurred to me that I should because I could. And um, there's a whole underground network of people out there that are doing this the same thought pattern I'm not the only guy to come up with these but I came I came to mind honestly through intuitive uh, thought and talking to other people and reading them as I'm doing something there's a reason why Johnny and June went like a couple of days apart. June went, she passed. Johnny passed right after that. Or maybe it's the other way around. I'm not sure. But they couldn't live without each other. And that's the thing that sustained them to old age was their love. Love, laughter, those are big curatives. Give me that. I actually have that. So I'm ahead of the game. Find some peace within yourself. But, you know, men are the worst at it. We're intuitive, just as intuitive as anybody. We just don't use it. Women use it daily. 
I'm not going over there tonight. I don't feel something's not right there. And then sure enough, there's a big argument and you were glad you weren't there. Men say, ah, it would be all right. <laughs> Men know they've got something and they don't report it until it's too late, hoping that it'll just go away. Unless you change what you're doing, you know, change your diet, uh, exercise. I do diet, exercise. I have a loving wife. I have positive thought. These are the things I've listed because they've helped me. Whenever, and I told you the story about the pills and I'm not taking those pills anymore. And I said, well, your blood pressure's good. Well, I'm just in that, I'm doing some self-healing. It's gone down. It's acceptable. It's in a good range. Now, not for them. I have a doctor that describes me as morbidly obese. <laughs> And I'll say, I think I weigh uh, like five or six pounds more than I did when I got out of college. So I've always been morbidly obese, according to him. Of course, he's like four foot eight and weighs 100 pounds. So anyway, don't listen. I had to tell him to stop saying that nothing morbidly about me. There's nothing obese about me. Well, my chart here, yeah, take that chart, put it away somewhere. I don't want to hear about it. It's a, it's a, it's a tricky road, what to listen to and what to ignore. Some doctors have really good sage advice, and others are just about money. That seems to be the two and I've known both of them. I've met both doctors. They do anything to save you, whatever they can do, whatever they can help with, and they listen to you. And the results are always much better when a doctor and a patient are working together. Instead of, uh, here, take this pill. All right, we gotta see you next week, too. Well, I don't think so. This is what we should be doing. We should be helping each other. And that's all I'm doing. I've compiled a list of things I think that kind of work. And I'm passing them on to you. What you do with them is up to you. Release the anger. Take control of your health. Doctors can only do so much. Want to live. More positive thoughts. Laughter. Love if you can get it. Uh, love lowers, I mean, it makes everything better. Use your intuition. You've got it. Everybody's got it. I just have an advanced case of it. It's like a, like a virus or something. Because I was sitting next to someone when they died. As soon as they died, I, I was a medium. So, but you all have it. I know. I've seen people use it. I said, huh? I don't know about that. And then they're, they're right every time. Trust your intuition. Trust your gut. Someone said that the other day. Something about their gut feeling was this and their gut feeling was that. Oh, trust your gut. I trust my intuition about myself and my gut feelings about myself more than anybody. And no machine can diagnose whatever it is. I always come up with what it is. I've been right every time. <laughs> Darn it. Learn how to heal yourself. That kind of healing energy boosts the immune system and allows the body to protect itself and heal itself. Most parts of the body can heal itself. We didn't used to think so, but most doctors believe that now. I'm working on myself all the time, morning and evening. I spend a little bit of time self-healing, meditating, thinking about, listening for voices, and this is what I came up with. Good or bad, there it is. I think it's probably one of the most important videos I've ever done. Sometimes just a, just a good laugh, a good smile is a lot. And it's the end of my speech, my ranting tirade speech. I'm just you know, I'm just pointing the way. The sign says go that way. 
This way is healthy. This way is not. I heard a guy once eating breakfast behind me. And someone was telling him he shouldn't be having biscuits and gravy. And it was that kind of gravy with the meat in it, like they'd cooked some sausage and put, the, ooh, that's the best kind. And he's a big fat guy. He said, you know, your health's no good. He says, uh, something about, if I can't have my biscuits and gravy, I'd just soon be dead. I thought, hmm. Dead is dead. Dead means you can't have biscuits and gravy anymore. And you could settle for something else. But that was his attitude. I'm sure he wouldn't, I'm sure he ain't around. He was 100 pounds overweight then. As a matter of fact, I noticed his belly was hitting the table in front of him and he had to squish to get in there. That, that there's a whole bunch of men out there that think like that. If I can't do things the way I've always done them, and my daddy did them, and his daddy did them, then uh, I just don't want to live. Yeah, I think you're going to get your wish. I think you're going to get your wish there. Keep doing things wrong, and things aren't going to turn out so good. No fear, no regret, no anger. Thanks for watching.